Hello and welcome back to Gotham Sound's coverage of NAB AES 2024 NYC. Um, nobody knows what that means, but I'm here with Cody uh, from Sound Devices. Cody, thanks for being here with us. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're fantastic. Very busy. Good, good. It's been glad, awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, so, Cody, before we dive into Sound Devices Wireless, because sure. that's what we're talking about today, just give me a little bit of your background, because I found that very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for a lot of my career, uh, before Sound Devices, for almost 20 years, uh, I was a large-scale uh, wireless um, frequency coordinator. Um, so, I had a lot of really, really high channel count shows that were in very... RF dense environments um, where channel counts are even getting up into the thousands. Mm -hmm. um, so New Year's Eve Times Square and the Dreamforce Convention, uh, all the way to different award shows like Latin Grammys and CMTs, things like that, where you know RF is such an important aspect to the show, but the channel counts are so incredibly high and the demand on wireless is very, very hard too. So that was the uh, really exciting part about sound devices and getting involved with sound devices and what they're doing with their receivers and uh, just the agility and the, the spectrum that we're able to access with that was the tool I always wish I had on a lot of those shows. Uh -huh. so, yeah. yeah. And you were mentioning uh, it's something you said right before we went live is like, oh, it's not getting any easier. No, nope, not by any means. So spectrum's getting tighter, channel count on every show, be it a production, a live TV filming, a concert, anything the demands are getting higher and higher, right? So we have to have more zones, we have to have more coverage, we have to have more frequencies, more channel count, um, and it just, it's not getting any easier. So we need to be able to work together and find the tools to help succeed, you know, all across the board, no matter what medium you're in. Yeah, all right, so question from Facebook. Uh, so this is, uh, as, as expected, uh, this is a question about the handheld. Okay. Uh, what's, what's the latest? Is it available for, uh, for purchase? Yeah, yeah. So um, the handheld, we're ex obviously extremely excited about. We know that's really been something everyone's been waiting on, and uh, we're really, really have nailed it. So we uh, appreciate everyone's patience on it. Um, but where we're at now is uh, by the end of the year, uh, people will have it in hand, and, and we're going to be uh, ready to go. So the entire ecosystem should be finished up. Great. Yeah, yep. so so coming soon. And there's some great... Um, uh, yeah, there's some, some great features about that as well. And it comes with a sound devices capsule, if I'm not mistaken. It does, mistaken. Yep, yep. yeah. So we're going to have a dynamic cardioid that will mm -hmm. come with it. Um, do you want me to bring it yeah, over? Yeah, bring and it show? over. Yeah. Why not? Is it going to have the, it d it's not going to have the orange windscreen. That's. Yeah, we will have an option for one. Oh, so okay. Yep, so you so you we'll have that. the orange windscreen, and then you'll mm -hmm. also be able to get a foam to make it black. Um, so this is going to be our handheld. Um, we've got a couple different really great ring options that are going to come with it. So mm -hmm. a three button, a one button, no buttons, and a slider as mm -hmm. well for different talkback options. Um, so it's going to be a really great product, and I think people are going to find a lot of reasons to utilize it uh, that maybe weren't really thought about uh, originally, right? It's more than just a handheld, I think. So yeah. yeah, yeah, got it. So, um, and yeah, we'll... We will do much more coverage of the handheld when it's officially available or when it's weeks out, but I know that there's still some some massaging to get it right and get it to market. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about because this is the the sweetheart of the location sound world. It's okay. the, the Nexus yep. original yep. or the Nexus Go. Yep. So what's what is just a quick breakdown because we've we've been through it's been out for a while, right? It's been yep. about a year. Yep. Um, so what's the quick breakdown of, of what this does that makes it unique in the location sound world? Totally, yeah. So we've got three really main features that I love to hit on with our Astral Series uh, uh, wireless mic receivers. So the Nexus being uh, the kind of flagship over here. Um, three things is Spectra Band, which is 169 megahertz up to 1525. Uh, the second thing is the real-time spectrum analyzer that's Wait, built in. Wait, so can we pause for that for a sec? So VHF, right? So yep. just all the way down low, like where your comm techs were, yep. up to ASCII. Uh, AvTrack, yep. Av, right. yep. AvTrack, okay. Yep. And that stands for? Uh, Aerospace and Flight Test Radio uh, Coordination Commission. All right, I love it. So number two. Uh, <laughs> um, but the whole point of that, too, is not just for the U.S. It's, you know, some of those areas that you were just talking about or that I mentioned are harder to get access to maybe here, but in other countries are completely open and legal, mm -hmm. right? So we wanted everyone to have access to the spectrum that they truly could have access to as a licensed or an unlicensed user with an STA or not, just provide as many options as possible. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, and the second thing is the real-time spectrum analyzer that's built into it. Uh, as a frequency coordinator, uh, that's my eyes and ears into the entire world. I think this is a very underutilized tool in just mm -hmm. our industry as a whole. Because um, you really get an idea of what's actually happening. If you have interference, you can see why you're getting interference or how many channels you can fit into a given space. So um, it's really, really important to have that and having that in while we're decoding audio. So that would be the real-time spectrum analyzer here. Mm -hmm. So we're actually viewing uh, in the VHF band here on the trade show floor at AES. Um, so you'll notice there's some activity here, um, but on the side to the right of that, you know, we're showing a minus 95 noise floor, right? So it's an incredibly wonderful part of the spectrum to try to utilize. So you wouldn't necessarily know that if you didn't have these eyes into the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a really, really powerful tool. Um, and then the third thing being Nextlink, uh, and so that's our bi-directional control protocol. Um, so from the receiver, you can control the transmitters um, and utilize things like even uh, battery saving, right? Turning it off remotely while you're in between takes or while you're keynote speakers in the green room mm -hmm. or what have you. Um, and then the really cool thing is combining two and three together. So with Nextlink and with the real-time spectrum analyzer, if you do have a frequency issue, just simply moving the cursor and reassigning your frequency at a moment's notice is just huge. And it happens like that. It I does, mean, it's yeah, really, it happens It's instantly. very quick. You almost hear, there's almost no lag yep. in it whatsoever. Um, and the other thing that I, I, I want to point out is when we're talking about VHF, because you know, we, when we think about, I said Comtech, right? Yep. So that is old uh, you know, analog technology, uh, you know, AM radio comes to mind, but it's digital VHF yeah. that you get. So you get the same sound quality in that low frequency uh, transmission, yeah. but with, you know. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, a really cool benefit and uh, you know why we think it's so important with the digital side in VHF is that we're able to actually utilize all the tools that sound device has always been known for. So we are still getting that fidelity out of VHF and we are still getting some of that great range that's mm -hmm. known with that longer wavelength in VHF too. So we've been able to kind of capitalize on that really great space and then make the uh, kind of sound devices, uh, you know, uh, all those trademark things you'd expect from us to really utilize that space better. Yeah, so let's let's um, just talk a little bit about the gain forward thing for a second, because we did have, we were talking to Scott from Reading about the Sheps KMIT yep. with their digital capsule. So there was a question about, um, you know, the, the, if you've got, so a digital capsule, going digital into an A20, right, because yep. this will do AES on it. Uh, then, you know, presumably digital into your sound devices, yeah. potentially recording at 32 bits. If you're making an adjustment in post, um, what is the change in, in noise floor, if any? Or wh how does the gain structure even work with that? Sure, yeah. And so with gain forward, this is going to be one of the massive benefits of gain forward and why we kind of have that as a protocol, mm -hmm. be it digital or analog, because it's going to help nominalize that signal through the entire chain. Mm. So I think you're going to see a lot of post departments really happy with the end product they're getting with just A, signal to noise, and B, just the overall fidelity of that chain. So um, that gain forward is going to kind of be the magic sauce to nominalizing between analog and digital. Got it. Yep. Very cool. So just uh, to clarify that th thing about gain forward and 32-bit. So basically what we're saying is there's no penalty for um, for adjusting the gain in post. Like because it's recorded digital, because it's transmitted digitally, because it's recorded digitally in 32-bit, yep. if you have to make a large adjustment in post, either bringing it up or bringing it down, there's not going to be a real penalty on that. Not that I'm really aware of, no. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. Fantastic. So I know this is the darling of the location sound world. I know you wanted to talk about the Super Nexus. Yeah. We did talk about this at NAB Las Vegas earlier, but y I know you wanted to talk about some of the, the benefits of this. Um, and, you know, I'll try to, you know, you're coming from a frequency live event standpoint, and I'll try to think about it from a, a set perspective. And we'll, we'll see where we meet. No, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, so one of the really cool things um, with uh, Super Nexus over the Nexus is not necessarily you know what we're looking at as benefits versus cons, mm -hmm. but the ability to kind of scale within this and still have all the same feature sets, right? So the RTSA, the Spectre Band, uh, Nextlink. But the big benefit uh, is mm -hmm. we've got these three pairs of antenna inputs and also three pairs of antenna outputs on this. So what we were kind of talking about with the demand and RF 
becoming more and more, whether it's a concert or whether it's a live TV show or whether it's a broadcast thing, um, multi-zone or more robust RF environments are becoming more and more important. And so traditionally to accomplish that, you've needed a bunch of extra gear, you've needed really knowledge to kind of build that system um, and you know other hardware to also be able to support that. So what we did was we kind of built in mm -hmm. a lot of those feature sets that we were really seeing out in the field. So now we can support either multi-location areas, multi-zone areas, or just building a more robust RF environment right in your singular stage. Is this the back of this? Yes. Sir. That, yep. So we're seeing so two of these. Yes, exactly. So this is the Super Nexus and the Opto, and then the back of the Super Nexus and the back of the Opto. Got it. Okay. Yep. So it's not. This is not an expansion port that you would need. Correct. This is. Yep. This is the actual back of the unit here. Mm -hmm. um, so now with these six antenna inputs, the ability to go into what we call hexversity, mm -hmm. um, which is one of our uh, really exciting features, is now six antennas mm -hmm. that we're using to cover a singular area. So just making our RF environment way more robust and a lot more, um, you know, uh, maybe call it confidence just kind of in your RF environment mm -hmm. with that extra robustness. Um, so diversity, forversity, or hexversity options, or multi-zone options. Maybe you're uh, doing a, a filming in two different places. Mm -hmm. So we've got a dressing room over here and we've got another outside area over here. We could actually just run two zones of antennas from the same unit, and now you talent can go in between places and still have that coverage. Right. Um, which, again, is just, I think, becoming more of a norm um, rather than something that's kind of specialized. Right, or if you are, so let's say you're doing a reality television show and there's the interview room and there's Absolutely. the set and there's you know this place over here for the judges and you're trying to record in three different places. So you can do all of that combining of the antennas here without having outboard gear. Exactly, yep. So now you could have a centralized receiver and be able to build your entire ecosystem based on that. And so again, just, you know, in the past, that's really been kind of a difficult accomplishment because mm -hmm. you've had to have a certain amount of know-how and access to that gear to be able to build that. Um, so that's just extraordinarily powerful and I really am excited to see how that's utilized, um, you know, coming up in the future here. Um, well, and then the other thing to think about is that if you are, because the thing that, the other thing that sets this apart from the Nexus, right, is that you get three 24 megahertz chunks. Correct. So you could be up in 900 and you could be down in VHF and you could yep. have something in the middle of UHF. Yeah. Um, and you could have different antennas for each of those all yep. with appropriate filtering if you wanted to. Yep. Um, and that would allow you to spread out your spectrum and still be, uh, and, and still cut out the noise that's coming in from digital TV exactly. and, and yep. all that so stuff. So again, uh, frequency agility is kind of the name of the game, mm -hmm. right? Being able to find all those little open slivers to support whether you're doing four channels or 32. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if predominantly you're only using eight channels, but maybe someday something's going to come up where you need 24, you've already got that scalability built in too without having to accomplish getting additional hardware. So... Um, yeah, just being able to have all those multi-zones and the centralized receiver hardware is really, really cool, and we think it's going to be a, a very massive benefit to that. And is this is this a port for DC power? Correct. Or what's that? It yep. is. Okay. Yep. So you could use that on set in, yep. a, in a battery uh, DC-powered yep. situation. Yep. Absolutely. So potentially, if you are somebody that does... TV episodic, uh, and you need, you know, let's say you're using 12 to 16 channels in general, yep. but then you also get called for something bigger, yep. uh, you can expand uh, with this as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, and then, you know, be it the application with this expansion chassis for our Opto, this can also act as another redundant power source as well. Oh. Um, plus the redundant analog, redundant AES, and an independently clockable MADI source. Um, and then the HMA on this is we have it hooked up to our Digico, mm -hmm. uh, so now it shows up in that ring as well. I just like the phrase independently clockable. I think that's yeah. cool. Yep. Fantastic job presenting this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, Any, anything else you want to say? No, just uh, we are really excited about you know what we're going with all this, and now that the ecosystem is going to be done and ready to go, seeing it out in the field and getting incredible user feedback so far, and we're just really happy that uh, we've got the support we do with it. So, awesome. yeah, thank you all very much. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Cody. Cool. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. Thank you all for watching, for your questions. Uh, stay tuned for more from NAB AES NYC 2024. As always, follow us on all the uh, Insta faces.